Hi, we're Swag Vintage AZ. Today I'm kind of switching up the intro here. I'm going to show you how to find us on Etsy. Just from the main page, if you search by shop and type in our name, which is S W A G V I N T A G E A Z, all one word, kind of long now that I said it. Anyway, that's how you can find us. And please follow our shop. Please like our stuff. Even if you don't want to purchase anything, it all helps us. We are also on Instagram, which is a great way to keep track of our listings and also just our general activities. And we're also in the Brass Armadillo in Phoenix, Arizona. And that is located on the I-17 and Cactus Road in Phoenix. So please swing by, take a look. There's so many amazing vendors there. We'd love it if you stopped by our booth, which is booth P2 in the parlor. And speaking of our booth, we are gonna do a little booth tour. So many people have requested this in the comments. Thank you all, I love the feedback. So this is the exterior of our wonderful Brass Armadillo Antique Mall. This was a gorgeous day I stopped by and this is what you want to look for down florida avenue the parlor you're going to hang left into this additional gallery off of the main mall and we are right there with the blue and green walls and we're just going to look at some of the things that we have so here is a wood frame trivet with feet 950 on that little sweetie it has a really beautiful blue and white tile then what do i look at next this was a piece that if you were thrifting with me, you saw me pick up. That one's $12.50. It's a mid-century modern condiment caddy. And then here are some items that you may not be familiar with because this these were found by my booth partner who really has a great eye for vintage stuff. So this is a very adorable Chevrolet cup for just $5 in that frosted glass. Here is one of my items, sweet little brass dish, $3.50. And this is a funny little thing and turns out it's not ours. It belongs in a different booth. So I went ahead and relocated that to the booth. Now this is one of my pieces. I think I've priced it a little too high. So I've got to reprice it, but I think it's just so amazing. There are a lot of carved animals in this style, but I've never seen like this clench from a cougar. It's $47.50. I thought it had so much character with that gazelle and its tongue poking out, but I'll probably reprice that pretty soon because it's been sitting there for a while and that is a high price, admittedly. But you know, we can dream, right? Here's a leftover lemon glass by Libby for $6.50. And then I am moving along to the back side of that shelf. This is a beautiful hand-stitched denim top, I think handmade, $7.50. And then this is a true military jacket. We don't do a ton of clothing in our booth, but I'll throw some stuff in there from time to time. I just sold like a Levi's jacket. That military jacket, whoops, is $15.50. <laughs> and then here are, you You see me pick up all of these purses all the time. Well, here we have that one from Mervyn's. I put $12.50 on it. And there are just hanging purses all over the place. I love this mug. Let's see what my partner put on it. Five bucks for this 70s Apple mug. It's so, so, so cute. Love the colors. And then he also found this Kate Spade beautiful mug. He put $7 on that, which I think is a steal. And then this is another one I really, really, really like. It's such a beautiful late mid-century style in that kind of speckled and drippy glaze. And he has $7 on that. This is funny. He found a mug. He put $4 on his. And then I found a matching one unknowingly. And I put $6.50. $6.50 is my standard price for most mugs. So if you want that pair, you can get it for about $10. Then he had a friend's mug that he picked up this is a cute little daisy mug that's one of mine for six dollars and fifty cents and this is basically shelving that we installed specifically for teeny tiny things and it's just kind of turned into our mug wall um, that was not strategic on our part but it really has been a great place for people to pick up a mug mugs are great sellers for us so we are just going with it Okay, and this one caught my eye. Some Marilyn Monroe playing cards for $7. And from here on out, I mostly pick up his items just because I don't get to see them very often unless I'm here. 
$4 for some vintage Tinker Toys. As you can see, more purses. This is actually my piece. It's a really cool prickly pear, and I had $12.50 on that. These are stunning mid-century gold pressed by, is it Sarah? Yeah, and so he has four of them for $16. And these turquoise and gold glasses are absolutely beautiful. I think they're really tough to find, and he has $20 on that. I think it's a set of one, two, three, it looks like. Um, so we have that available. Then moving along, a thermos vintage for $7. And if you remember that horn, <laughs> that fake horn I got a few weeks ago, that is in the booth. And then this is like a complete set of all of these beautiful birds in a mid-century style. Let's see what he has on it. He's got eight for $22. Love, love, love that set. And then he's got $7 for two blue glasses. Here's just a single little Indiana glass for $8. And then some Harker covered casserole. That's a nice piece. He does such a good job, it's unbelievable. And his prices are lower than mine, just across the board. So please come to our booth and load up because he's got some really great prices. That 1950s iron, what did he have on it? Was that $12? And it works. So I love that piece. And here we have a little collection of those postmodern martini glasses. His marked at just $6. And then what did I put? I put mine for more, of course, $8.50. Nonetheless, I think these are great prices for those. I've sold them online for $14 to $20 per piece. So that's definitely a steal for the booth. And here is a homespun mug for five dollars that pattern he says is really collectible i am not a dishware expert though he is so i always take his word for it and then he has these beautiful bright lemon yellow they're called red wing collection and all priced very well matching my nail polish that day and let's see what else he has oh this was actually a chalkware piece I had. That bowl is 12 bucks, and I really liked this piece. I picked it up a long time ago. I think it would be a really funky piece on a dining table or just in the dining area. I have it at $17.50. I should probably reprice that because I think that's a little high, so I have some work to do in the booth next time I am there. Moving along to this beautiful painting that has been in the booth for a while. Let's see what he has on it. 35 amazing price for a signed artist work. I love those colors. They're really muted and like late mid-century. These are some pressed dried flowers framed that it's one of my pieces for $24.50. And moving along, this is our first tour of our booth. I hope this is what y'all had in mind. I let me know if you want me to explain things differently. Here I'm just kind of looking at our prices of our different items. And for me, it's really fun to look through and see what he has. Right now, I'm just checking out all of the Fiesta wear that we have. I find Fiesta wear from time to time. My partner finds it very often and frequently. So we have a whole section and it's a steady seller for us. We keep the prices pretty low, I believe, um, compared to anything you'd find online. So yeah, it looks like dinner plates are in the 13 to $15 range. Typically, I think they're like 18 to 20 online. So save a couple bucks there. I love that platter for $8, really cool colors. I do stock some brass items and here, this shelf I had, there were some things in there. Obviously it's looking a little, empty so we had some sales happen there this is a 12 dollar pitcher in an incredible style and color then this painting up here i tried to zoom in on the price wow 30 dollars for this beautiful traditional still life i love that piece it's rather large and at brass armadillo if you ever need help reaching anything the staff is so friendly and ready to help so here's $25 for both of these incredible lamps. Again, that's one of his pieces. And I'm trying to review, or not review, but show off his stuff because if you're on my channel, you see me pick up my stuff. So here you can see what a visit to the booth. There's just so much more 
not just my thrifting, but his as well. He's really great with kitchenware. So here's a Fire King piece for $7. And this is Autumn Leaf. And he has a lot more of that, I think, down here. And he said that lately he's been selling really well with this type of dishware. So we have some available. I love this sphere brown pitcher. So cute. $10. Sometimes I want to buy the stuff that he puts out here. And then this one has gold stripes. Really pretty. There is a little bit of fading on the gold, but still worth it another ten dollars they make a really cute pair too so that's a lovely piece and moving along we have some yellow crinkle glasses i think those are mine and then here's my little monkey pod wood area with all of those monkey pod wood bowls and partitioned serving platters that i just cannot resist so let's see. But what I focused on was that avocado glass bowl, and he has that for $8. Then I wanted to see what my price was here. So $27.50. I think this is a beautiful watercolor, very serene and calming European scene. So I decided to put that behind these brass pieces. So maybe someone will be more inclined to see it and buy it and excuse me while I do a little rearranging on the video. It's the majority of our time spent in the booth is just moving things around. I mean, it's just part of the job, right? Like just rearranging endlessly. So I'm hoping that someone appreciates that one as much as I do, because I do think it's really, really pretty and in a lovely color, look really good on it with like a gallery wall. Okay, and I'm standing up and we're moving over here to, these are those mid-century fold-up chairs I found a while ago. I think I'm looking at the purse first. Yeah, so this handbag was six, I have $16.50 on it. And then I was curious to see what price I had on the chairs because they haven't moved yet. So $25.50 I think is pretty fair. We'll see if they go and if not, I'll lower that. These are some new in-box stockings, nylons that are unused, of course, for $10. And those are were found by my partner. I can tell by, he has just slightly different handwriting than I do. And then I love this piece that he found a while ago, this really unique needlepoint, $25, just a lovely shape, framed, beautiful, color still bright. This was one of my art pieces that I found, $42.50. And you might recognize that candelabra, some other art pieces, and this is just a few lamps. I recently sold one, so we always have lamps in the booth. And then I love these Anchor Hawking bright, bright green sets. And he has eight for 16, I think the other one was 19. And then we have these beautiful glasses that are very popular in the amber glass. I think those are mine, yeah anchor hawking once again. So tons of glassware if you're looking to do some upgrades. <laughs> he recently added this penguin ice bucket, which is just a classic $8. And if this was a Laura Caldwell video, she would be playing her music that she always plays when she finds one of them in an antique booth. So we are guilty. <laughs> Here's, I love this lemon yellow ceramic ginger jar lamp. I have 27 on it. I think 27.50, I think it would be gorgeous. This one we named Jerry. It just looks like, it looks like a lamp from a bowling alley, like inspired by a bowling alley. And then this one is like a plaster pretending to be wood lamp. I just loved those shapes. So I, have those at the booth. Here's a cute little blue lamp for $14. That one comes with its shade. This tiger fabric. Oh, actually, I'm supposed to be talking about this lamp. All right. So I love this piece. It looks like a chess piece, like a pawn. And the oatmeal fabric with that ribbon shade. I have $45 on it painted in a beautiful blue cyan with black speckles and a gold base. It is flawless. So I'm hoping that that one sells. I love it when I sell a lamp. And then this is, I have a tag on a crazy ass stocking tiger. 
um, for 20, did I have 25 on that or 27, but somewhere around there. And then another art piece just for $22, very pretty, some more handbags. And then this is the final shelf of our booth. And we have this cookie jar for $16 and classic mid-century soup mug, $4. Here's a child's vintage magic slate for $8. I don't know what that means exactly. <laughs> I wish I had picked it up and played with it a little bit. Another frosted glass. That one is $6. And what else do we have here? I have some Roadrunners available. Didn't check the price on those. I think they're pretty low though. And then here we have a SeaWorld souvenir. Kind of love it. Shot glass. This funny little wooden fish. But what I'm getting at is this bookend. That was one of my favorite things that I found. It has this really funny mouth. I'm $23.50 on it. Again, I tend to price higher on ones that have so much character, but I may reprice that in the next couple weeks because it hasn't sold yet. Here's a really cool lamp, $42.50. I love the pattern and design on it and the color, of course, in this kind of olive muted green. And then finally, this is where we portray all of our blankets and linens and things. Here's a really great, I think it's just like a linen cloth or no, it's a curtain. Where's that price tag for $6? Super cute and retro. And then we have some vintage towels and then that Afghan I actually have snagged from the booth because I have an online buyer for it. And then here are a beautiful mid-century modern 22 pieces for $24 a couple chips but check out that beautiful teal and kind of oatmeal cream finish so that is our booth I hope that you swing by sometime soon thanks for doing that with me and now let's get to the thrift in we are at a goodwill on a cloudy day and we are grabbing a cart. I don't have any superstitions about grabbing a cart or not grabbing a cart. So it really just depends on like my mood, but I don't think it determines any fate. I'm not really like a super woo woo person. So here we are in the wood aisle. That's a cute little cross stitch T for two. And I guess, oh, $1.49. I could have picked that up. That it's, but it's a little bit, um, oh, I don't know, granny core, is that what they call it? Which, like, totally fine with granny core. It's just not my vibe, that's all. So there's a funny little dog box. I feel like I like if I were thrifting today as I'm narrating this, I probably would have picked both of those pieces up and put them in the booth. But this happened a couple days ago. So, you know, it's always like, it just kind of depends on your mood. So these days I'm actually looking for a big wood box that is not doesn't have the cutlery inserts inside because I inherited an old 1924 mahjong set that's like my aunt sent it to me so she just has it in a tin and I'm trying to find something pretty to put that in because I am going to keep that one for myself okay so we have some sort of cutting board or charcuterie board not vintage in any way. I think I just pulled it out to see the bright colors. And here, is there something underneath there? Something is catching my eye. It's a gold shiny thing, which is very typical for me. Let's see if I can get that out. Okay, so a farmer for $6.50. I thought that was a little steep for that piece. So we went ahead and left it. And taking a step back to view it all at once and I moved on into the furniture I'm heading towards this little footstool that has a very pretty needlework on it I like the geometric carving on the side it had a little bit of staining in that top left corner so this one is destined for the booth I think I think it's oh no it's in my box now to be delivered to the booth soon so that the customer can really take a look because that's only fair right all right so we're squeezing through this furniture section and not really finding much else here 
I think I cut the camera because I was running into that garbage bin. And then here I, of course, this caught my eye, this big, beautiful hand-painted flower on this jug. Large piece, it's signed. I really, really liked it. Let's see what the price says. I think it was a little high. What are we coming in at? Yeah, $17.50. A little rough on that price, but I went ahead and put it in the cart anyway, I believe. Here I am tapping my fingers, thinking about it. And yes, there I go. Okay, so it's in the cart and we're gonna give it a ride at least and see what happens. Checking for chips there. And all in all, it looks pretty good. So two things in the basket. Hopefully we'll get on a roll here and into the lamps. Again, my favorite section. Not too many here. I think at this point it would have to be something just outrageously spectacular at a super good price for me to get another lamp. Although recently I sold two lamps out of the booth and I'm very excited about that. So here we are looking at the shades and that top shelf in the lamps, I that's where if you're gonna find, oh, here I am <laughs> inspecting this shade. I don't know what I had in mind for it exactly, but I know that this style is popular but there were some cracks on the inside and those really will show through once you put a bulb in there. It, all of those cracks are like electric. <laughs> now here I saw one of these dumbbells where you can change the weights. Of course, this is not for resale. This would be something that I have at home. So here I am experimenting with it for a little while, though these are really pricey online. These ones only went up to like 15 pounds. So we didn't, I didn't really have a use for those at home because I already have those weights. So you'll watch me mess around with these for a little while. But what I was saying about the lamp shelves is that that top shelf above the table lamps, that's where you're going to find your swag lamps. One time I found a wall accordion lamp uh, on that shelf. So I never ever skip that area because you do find lighting of all sorts um, on that shelf. It can always be the messier of the two shelves, but definitely worth a look. Okay, now we're getting into, we're just running into everything on this trip. I was like, maybe I had a bad wheel on the cart. Here we are looking at the big arts and I saw this drawing, which intrigued me, taking a closer look and realizing that it wasn't too dynamic. I mean, it was just a line drawing and there wasn't a lot of depth to it. So even though it was a signed original piece, I did not pick that one up. Then these are obviously like commercially made. And there's an interesting piece, but very juvenile, not juvenile, I don't know, immature, rough, inexperienced, and not like in that cool outsider art way. Oh, and then there we have a photograph of the Redwoods, kind of a cool vintage photo, but not, not something I would go to the trouble of storing and trying to sell baseball cards. I have no clue about baseball cards. They are definitely not in my wheelhouse, but interesting to see them nonetheless. I just sold some hand-carved wood dominoes, like a big, huge pile of rainbow-colored ones. So I was kind of checking those out just to see if they were vintage in any way, but I think they were just plastic. And as I've mentioned before, the bags are one of my favorite places because you really can find big scores in here like this. So I don't know that this is a big score, but here we have a single bag that's only $3.50 and it has a bunch of mid-century modern wood fruit. I'd love to find grapes someday in the wood, but that one has like two bananas and a bunch of apples. So that was a pretty good score. I think I could probably sell that for, hmm, maybe like $12, $15, something like that. So here I am just looking for any other bags of wood fruit, but the rest of these were not wood. They were more contemporary fake fruit. I mean, if you ever need fake fruit, just go to the Goodwill bags area because it's just 
every single Goodwill has fake fruit, at least in Phoenix, Arizona. I don't think I've seen without at least like some plastic grapes or something. All right, so we're moving along and searching for things. Again, I'm just looking for more of the fruit. You know, there's a tendency for multiple bags to exist containing kind of similar stuff. So they'll split up a collection often. And here, that was like an interesting carved wood. What else do I find? Anything brown or wood, I'm always checking out. Okay, so now here we are in the luggage. Typically I'm looking for something a little more vintage than this. I mean, this could be like 80s, 90s briefcase, but I kind of, I think briefcases are funny. They're so of my childhood. I feel like every professional had a briefcase back when I was a kid. So I think I'm just kind of looking at this for fun. It was in good condition, you know, cheap price, but I don't think there's really a market for that specifically. And I'm always just kind of checking it out again for any sort of maybe like a vintage bowling ball bag or something like that. I've sold things that look similar in the past, you know, specifically like anything that would have like a stripe down the front, like a vertical multicolored stripe down the front. Those are really good sellers. So here's another bag section. And this was, I mean, such a good price for this product. Um, I spend a lot of money on the things that go under rugs at my house. So I considered picking that up. I don't know if I did though. So we'll see what happens in the video. Yep. All right. Into the cart. And that's just for home use. I think I ended up putting it back, but here we have some brass napkin rings and look at this. Like I said, a collection that has been split up among several bags. So it's a hammered brass look, most likely made in India. So I went ahead and snagged one and then I didn't really count how many there were in each bag, but I thought, you know what, let's just get them all because I can sell them in sets. And it turned out that they were in four perfect sets of six. So I have the first set in my booth, another set on Etsy, I have some spares. So I hopefully will be selling those off little by little. And I think each bag was $3.50, maybe $4.50. And I can sell a set of six for about, I think, $20, $25. So that's where the price point is, at least online. And here I'm looking in belts. I'm always... I mean, like right now I'm looking for like a thick, cool belt. This was not it, but typically what I'm looking for in belts is that tool leather that's like so desirable. I think I've mentioned this before. I've only found one so far and it had the name Barbara <laughs> stamped on it in a really cool style. I had it in the booth. It took a while to sell, but somebody picked it up, probably a Barbara. So that was a great find. And I'm always on the lookout for either tool leather, purses, wallets, purse, I already said purses, belts, um, those kinds of things are pretty desirable and a reliable sale. And I'm looking in handbags. That one caught my eye for some reason. Can't really explain why now. And this Goodwill actually has, I mean, you can see it's a little sparse right now, but they, they have a huge section of purses and so many hooks. So I've been here other times where it's jam-packed, but not that day. Okay, so I'm looking in bric-a-brac knickknacks, and here is an interesting piece. I liked the colors and the flowers, big old chip on the neck. I don't think it was vintage or handmade or special in any particular way, but curious enough to check it out. Same with this one, ceramic piece, looks new. So I left that after a quick glance. And what else is here? Okay, so this tall ceramic kitty cat, which was very cute. It's new, but for $12.50, and I think it had a crack or some damage to it. Again, not any kind of vintage in any way, but that had it been a smaller price, 
I could have picked up something like that and put it in the booth because even like, we're not strictly vintage there. Like we, of course, like I'd say 98% of what you saw in the booth earlier is vintage, but we also include just cute stuff that we like. I had noticed this patterned weaving like basket weaving and I was curious about it enough to dig it out but it turns out it's just kind of like a contemporary mm, do nothing <laughs> say nothing piece in my opinion like it's pretty I like the pattern but not anything I would put in our booth and it's newly made so here we have a little bell looks like or just some kind of cap and oh, I see these from time to time in different animals. I think they're wine holders, but God, they gross me out. I just, they're so gross. So anyway, um, I had to pick it up and admire it and be grossed out by it. And I, so, ugh. anyway, what a weird gesture, right? And moving along this, even though I'm not really finding much here. Oh, but here, oh, I love this little lady. She is a wire, like a wrought iron wire in kind of a postmodern style. She's got this curly hair and you can put like your greeting cards in her head and her hands. So I went ahead and picked that one up. I think she is so funny and charming. She's in my dining room right now. I'm just kind of like hanging with her. I might put her in the booth or online, but I have a few similar pieces. This is so sad. I love this tone a lot. Beautiful hand painted bird made in Mexico but it had that big old nasty crack in it, so I had to leave it, which is very sad. Anytime I find a tonal up piece, it sells super quick, especially in my booth, which was kind of counterintuitive. Oh, there's a gross bear doing that. Anyway, it's kind of counterintuitive because living in Arizona, one would think that we are just inundated with Southwest things, especially items from Mexico, but those are so cool. They sell way fast out of the booth. So we really have a market here for them. And I've sold a few online as well. Into the glassware. Now this is a very adorable martini glass. And then they have these smaller kind of liqueur glasses in a martini glass style with the zigzag. So I went ahead and picked up a pair. I have the larger martini glass in my shop with a clear stem and it hasn't yet sold so I was curious to find out if maybe a colored stem would be the thing to sell I really like them I think they're super fun and silly this is I actually have a full set of these in my shop right now with the paint on the outside that beautiful scroll in really good condition those were super faded and flat like you could barely even feel them anymore so they've gotten a lot of use but not not in good enough condition for a resale and plus i have i think it's a full set of six that i'm waiting to sell so i don't need any more i'm curious about these i see these often i think they are kind of a cousin to those ball stem martini glasses but they're always in clear glass so i don't think they would really sell and then here i find this electric blue glassware I mean this looks like maybe like a water goblet would be great with like a white sangria or a mimosa or a ranch water I thought those are spectacular the video only barely captures the color of this glass I've seen other glassware in it but it really glows like in any kind of light it's just constantly glowing so I picked up a healthy four of those they are listed online right now i love them so much they're so gorgeous so i was happy to find those and then hello don't mind if i do these are indiana glass in the amethyst color and again the video the color is just a little bit off these have a really pretty purplish violet color it's looking it, there's a little too much red in it in this video but they are stunning and they are also listed in my shop. And then take a look. Here's more of that amazing blue. Now these are called, or these are by a company called Crystar, I believe. And I've sold those from my shop before. So I went ahead and grabbed them. So typically I would pick up, I try and keep it with like even numbers with just like twos, fours, sets like that. But here I just was feeling a little crazy, everybody. And I was finding 
some of the colors. So you're going to see me, I just, it's like so sad leaving one behind. So here I am contemplating and I'm like, no, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. And then it's like, yeah, okay. I'm going to do a three set. I'm going to be real crazy and sell three glasses at once. So then I saw this and these are so cute. It's a very like 80s pastel desert scene a little bit holiday but not necessarily it just has like a string of lights and a star and there's four hello in an even number so i went ahead and snagged these now all of these glasses i think the most expensive one was two dollars and fifty cents and those were the amethyst ones maybe they were 350 but these are i think a dollar fifty each the blue ones i think were 99 cents each so this is why i really love selling glassware because you can just load up and it's a small investment and the markup is significant enough that you really get your more than a return. So by that logic of selling the three blue glasses, I thought, well, why don't I sell these three zigzags? So now my cart is jingling and jangling as I'm coming through the aisles in this for the rest of this thrift. And it's a little stressful to get that much glassware. Oh, I've picked that one up before. That goose it's those stripes that always get me and then I turn it around and it's a goose and I there is kind of like a popularity of geese right now in kitchenware but I don't think it's happening in my local mar market and I just don't see the resale really sticking it out you know like maybe it was a funny thing that I saw on social media for a minute I don't know but tell me if you know where you live everyone's like going crazy with the geese because I'd love to know Okay, into another area of bags. I'm loving the bags this trip. And I think I found something, if I'm remembering right. Oh, looking at cutlery, of course. You know I love it. And then I see this really pretty blue glass. Now, the only disadvantage with bags is that it's hard to really inspect the glass and judge if it's high quality, low quality. I say these are pretty like mid-grade or I guess I should shorten that to say mid, because isn't that like when you're supposed to say slang wise? But anyway, but I went ahead and picked these up. I think they're pretty enough. Again, there's three. So they are in the booth for like a really low price. Sometimes it's just kind of like, well, I like them. It doesn't really matter if they're the highest quality in the world, but they're cute. So, and then here I am looking at a ball stem glass, it seems, but that bag was six dollars and 49 cents oh and it had like a logo on it so i left that behind i would not pick up one of those for six dollars and 50 cents because that's probably the max i can get for them in my booth so that's we're, we're just going to leave that and you know sadly another disadvantage of bags as much as i love them that was one thing that i wanted in a bag that had it been by itself i probably only would have paid like 50 cents or a dollar for it but that's okay. We can let it go. And here I am just further checking out these cutlery bags. Those looked like maybe an 80s set of knives looking kind of vaguely familiar. And into the dishware. Here we are just, this is like an honorable mention. Like I feel like it's an incomplete thrift if you don't at least look at the dishware even though I'm not prone to picking up many pieces it's just like a tradition at this point I loved these though in this 80s style with the black and the irises love it we'd love to see that in a house where someone's really going postmodern and they have like a great Nagal piece you know hanging in the house that is definitely from my childhood. Like the cool moms had houses with that decor. Not my mom. <laughs> we were very traditional. And then into the kitchenware. Always looking up, always looking down. Taking a step back. All the different strategies of making sure you don't miss anything too crucial. These were pretty and, you know, very... I guess kind of common but I liked the look of them enough to pick them up and look at them but I did not think that they had any resale value and here I'm checking out this 
what seems to be maybe a cookie jar. I liked the shapes on it. I think it was a newer piece. Let's see if I can flip it over. Hmm, tough to say. But it was big, nice color. I think I just didn't want to deal with the scale of it. And when I picked it up, I remember it being a little bit lightweight, so just suspicious enough to leave it into some jars and bottles. And we're moving on into further kitchen with pots and pans. I really just do a quick walk through this section looking for any copper pieces that I might pick up or take a look at. This looked like a vintage toy, but it was a reproduction I found out. So obviously it has those plastic pieces in addition to like that metal piece that makes it look vintage. So I left that behind. And then into the candles. This is an aisle that I always get really excited about. First of all, it smells good. Secondly, that's kind of a pretty Southwest Sedona inspired candle. But secondly, this is where you're gonna find your brass candlesticks or otherwise other materials candlesticks. And those are great sellers. I thought that these were really pretty though not in the best condition. They were extraordinarily heavy. Very beautiful sconces made out of a heavy metal, but with the damage to them, and because there were two of them, ooh, look at that one go, ooh. And at $8.50 each, you know, you're looking at like a $17 investment, and I don't think that I can make much off of that. So goodbye to those. These caught my eye as a nice little set. They look handmade, a little rustic, but at $7.50, and then this one was, I don't know, probably $6.50 the tag had come off. The felt on the bottom is like a dead giveaway, you know, that that was a home homemade piece. And then this little guy with its big chip and they wanted five fifty for that. So again, as a set, they're a little rough and really expensive and there was damage on it. So too bad, had to leave it behind. Here is clearly a pinch pot style, coil pot style. It was signed, you know, it was kind of charming in its own way, but I left that one behind. It really was obviously something made in like a art class, which doesn't mean it's bad. I've found some amazing pieces that I think were made in art classes, um, particularly like studio pottery pieces. I think in the classroom people can get super creative. This was intriguing, a little stair step rack of some sort. Don't know what it would be used for, so I put that back. Then investigating these shelves a little bit, probably creaking my knees as I'm standing up. Anything with like a brass tone I'll pick up, but these were very plain and that one, the first one was 750, that one's 550. It's just too pricey to turn those around for anything else because they were rather plain. This is a pretty little shell piece for $2.50, though the metal was a little chewed up. So I think I set that back. It was so lightweight too. And I don't think I could get more than $4 for it. Here's an elephant. Anything shiny is gonna catch my eye. And here was an interesting brass piece that I wanted to take a closer look at. Oh, look at me. And basically I wrestled with this thing for like five minutes. Every time I tried to pick it up, it would fall over again. It was already broken, I swear. But <laughs> it was just this hassle. See, there I go again. It was like giving me so much trouble. I'm like, get out of, and then the lid fell off. So I'm like, get this thing out of my life. So uh, that was, I was chuckling at myself when that was happening. It's pretty absurd. So I didn't even bother to put it back in a pretty way. I'm like, just leave me, leave me out of this. Okay, then into the clear glass almost. Oh, there was an iron there that I wish I would have looked at. Oh, well. They, this Goodwill has a really nice clear glass section typically. And I saw these, they're very beautiful. They're crystal. Waterford with their sticker, but $20 and er, $19.50 each. They're obviously bookends in a fan style. Another, I don't, I didn't catch the maker of those, 
These were just kind of funny and cute at a dollar each, but they're more like a, just a plain glass. So left those and still searching, not finding anything. And I'm really flirting with those a lot. I thought they were cool and I did look them up, but their resale value was right around the price tags that the Goodwill had put on them. So good for them. You know, they'll get their money. Someone will find them. I think it's a pretty good score for someone who wants to keep them, but for resale, not so much. And I guess I'm just really loving this. I am doing like a slow pan. It's just so pretty. <laughs> okay. Enough of that. Now here we are in the wires section, some candle holders. I was briefly interested in those. I thought they were kind of interesting, but ultimately decided not to do them. I have had a few like wrought iron wire pieces, both in the booth and online, and they're not really selling. So we're going to take a pause most likely on that. That's funny. Jefferson said Jefferson. We'll leave him. Then this is a real random shelf different animals. And initially thought that might be a vintage brass piece, but it wasn't, it was new. So we are moving on to the end cap and into the small frames, some wood. I wouldn't even know how to categorize this aisle, but here I found a tiny little vintage brass frame. So we'll pick that up. It was 99 cents. That's a perfect one. I could put that in the booth for five or six dollars and they have consistently sold pretty well. So happy to have found that. And we're looking in folders and photo albums. If you ever need any of those, just come to the Goodwill. That aisle is always stocked with folders. And you can always find spare papers and notebooks and things like that as well. And now I'm checking out the lower shelves, always necessary, but nothing really peeked out at me. So here I am looking for the Harry Potter book because, you know, I'm on a mission now. Like I'm a believer. I'm an optimist, I guess. Kind of have to be if you do this. So I'm checking all the spines for the red and blue color blocking though this was not my day for that book but it'll happen it's gonna happen and yeah there we are the books I really like the book section it's kind of peaceful and I feel like the other customers in the book section are like sweet readers you know sweet people I did find this and I did go ahead and pick this one up it's David Sedaris's self-proclaimed greatest hits uh, anthology. And I like David Sedaris, so, oh, there's a Harry Potter book. I love David Sedaris, so I went ahead and picked that up because I don't have that one yet. And their books are typically priced $3.50 or $4.50, so, you know, you can't beat it. All right, here is the cart shot at long last, mostly glass, got those brass napkin rings, the wood fruit, the stool, and I have been super vigilant about posting things online daily. So if you follow me on Instagram, you will see every single listing that I put up. And most of what you have seen in this video, I already have listed. Here I am, you know, it, this always happens. I'll take the cart shot and then I find more stuff. So. I thought that lion was so cool, but so expensive. And here's just a trio. If I'll stop looking at these doll legs. Yeah, here we go. So we had a lion, a horse, and a seahorse, all $30 to $40 each. So I couldn't justify it, but I thought they were super cool. I love that lion. Then here, we saw this frog earlier. If there's, I, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I have to do it. And then this Goodwill always has these amazing t-shirts every time I go you know I picked up that Dr. Pepper one and that awesome Corvette one a few weeks ago so these were just some like graphical tees that I found and I think 
I'm agonizing because I don't really need any more t-shirts because I've been finding so many lately. So I put the Scooby-Doo one back, I'm pretty sure. But the Harry Potter Ravenclaw one, that is like my house. And, oh, and then here's a really cute Rugrats one. I mean, someone who does this, this is the Goodwill up in Anthem. If you're in Arizona and you sell t-shirts, I have really come across a lot of them here. And this is gonna take us to the end of this particular thrift trip. And then I spied this at the very end. All right, I'm ashamed. Like this is pretty record breaking uh, mess for me. Just kind of insane right now. I'm getting ready to pack some orders. So I will get organized again. Hey there, as usual, I have some items that I picked up off camera when I wasn't filming. First, just some things I picked up for myself. Here's a big old set of Pioneer Woman measuring cups. It looks like up to two cups. And we are bakers at our house, so this is for us. Not vintage in any way or like particularly cool. I'm not even like a Pioneer Woman person, lady person, but I thought that was cool. This one is for me. I'm going to give it some restorative, I don't know, leather, uh, oil and soap and all that kind of stuff. My husband knows how to do all that. But for $8.49, I loved this. I mean, like ideally this style purse would be in tooled leather. Like that's like the holy grail of this, but it has a nice shoulder strap. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this for myself because I've been on the hunt for a new leather purse. So super excited to find that. Then next I found these Culver for $2.50 each, two mid-century modern pressed gold duck tumblers. We've got ourselves the green, green, green winged teal and the European widgeon. Not really up on my ducks, but I think I'll probably try and sell these online. I'll have to look up like what resale value they have, but they are so cute. What a pair. Then this I pick up, I have a tendency to pick up a lot of these like display easels. I think this one was a dollar. Yep, 99 cents. I use them constantly, either in the booth or for like my photo shoots or in my home. So those are really handy to have. I love these two mid-century, late mid-century matching mugs, kind of like soup mug style, brown with a nice blue edging. Really love those. And then this was a gorgeous, let's see, signed. Just Mexican pottery or ceramics in blue. Really, really, really pretty, hand painted. Love, love, love. And what did I pay for that? $1.50, that's a great price on that one. And then these always hold a great place in my heart. I think this one is vintage. It looks old enough, $3.50. Oh, it has someone's name on it, that's really cute. But these were around all the time when I was a kid, these scorpions in resin. So even though 350 is like kind of a lot for this, I don't know, I just loved it and so I picked it up. Then this is adorable. I don't know that it's necessarily vintage, but it's this sleeping wood kitty cat. I got for $4.50. I had intentions to give this to my daughter, but I haven't yet looked it up or done any comps on it, but it's so cute. Look at that face. It's a kitty. Okay, and then this elephant planter, I haven't done any research on it at all. It looks vintage to me for $5.50. It's very heavy. Uh, it's signed and it has a stamp on it, so I'll look into it. It could be contemporary and just faking me out, but nonetheless, it's a really cool piece. And like trunk intact, you know, tusks intact, all the good stuff you want to find for an elephant. Oh, elephant, really pretty. These, it was a three pack. One is broken, so I will just go ahead and discard that one most likely. But the other two are good. They're made of wood, as far as I can tell, um, and they have this unbelievable geometric shape to them. So I really, really, really like that spun table leg kind of vibe. And I think that's it for my off camera pickups for the week. Oh, I forgot one more like star of the show. This pair of ceramic drip glaze mushrooms mushrooms are like a big deal right now so two dollars and fifty cents for each i need to do research once more not signed no um 
stamp that I can see, but this is like a matte finish and then, woo, and then they have like a glossy finish on the top. So that was a wonderful score. No chips in great shape. Oh, wait, one more. This, <laughs> again, okay, $4.50. A thing I promised myself I would not get a clock, but look at this live edge wood with the hole in the middle. So it goes like this, <laughs> like that. Very, very cool. So hopefully I can put batteries in here and it'll keep time. If not, I'll have to replace the hands. I've done it before, but there it is. So I went ahead and just played around with all of these items and staged them. Well, maybe not all of the items, but you get the idea. Go ahead and check our Etsy shop to see what's listed and see us at the booth. Now let's talk about what's sold. First, these incredible Lucite and brass candlesticks sold that you saw these in the last video and I'm so pleased that they sold at market price so very happy with that and then this set of incredible coffee cups and saucers sold for $80 their Legardo Tacket they still have their signatures and stickers I don't think they were ever used it's a beautiful bright fun mid-century colorful set They've been in my shop for a really long time, so I was super thrilled that these sold. That was a really happy sale. And then, hey, look, this was from the last video, this Italian-made wood inlay landscape portrait sold for $37.50. It's just a really lovely piece. I'm so happy it sold. And here it is staged with some other pieces that I've picked up recently that might look familiar, including that little owl, which also sold with its big mama, the bowling ball sized mom and the baby for $85.50. I priced that a little under market, just barely, but I'm so happy it sold. And this is the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.